Welcome back. On this video, I'm really happy to show you our brand new library, Electric Bass, for Halion, Halion Sonic, and Halion Sonic SE. So what I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to take you through a quick walkthrough of the library. I'm going to play quite a few sounds. I'm going to play a few presets so that you can hear how versatile this library is and how quickly you can move between different genres of music. So let's get started. So here we go, here's the electric bass interface and I'm going to start with the initial electric bass preset so we can start with a clean slate and we can start tweaking the sound, adding things to it. So let me show you how it works. I'm not going to go through all the controls, we have a dedicated video for this that Greg has done so please go and check it out. Today I'm going to focus more on the sounds and how you can shape the controls to get the sound that you have in mind. So to begin with, let's try this sound. That's how the initial preset sounds like. So it's immediately playable, it's immediately ready to go. But let's try a few of the sounds. The first thing is the pickups. And right now we have all pickups. So all the pickups are active right now. Now if I change this, I can go to a J bass configuration. Then we have the P bass configuration. So very, very different sound. Then we have the M and bass configuration. This has more mid range. Then of course we have all pickups that we've already played and then we have neck only and that's different to let's say the J bass. Bridge only and of course we have the stereo rick. Then of course we have the articulations, we have sustains, slaps, sustain picks, the slap pull. Now the slap pull is very interesting because I have a slap here and a pull on the higher strings. So if you want to play this kind of funky styles, you know, like really, really cool slap bass. That's going to be really, really cool. Then we have the player styles, and what these styles do is they determine the positioning on the fretboard. So basically, the standard one is a very nice all round um, player style. And then, if we go, for example, on metal, you will see that it avoids the open strings because it's more characteristic of the style. So experiment with these styles because they're really, really interesting and they change the sound actually. Then we have the auto legato option. And if you want to play fast passages, this is really, really good. It gives you a really realistic sound. So let me show you how it sounds without it. And then with the auto legato on. Now, the great thing with the auto legato is that you can play really, really fast passages. So to be honest with you, I would never turn this option off unless I was looking for a very specific sound, but the auto legato is a really, really cool feature in electric bass. Then we have the auto slide option that allows you to do slides between different notes. For example, or 
And then of course we have a way to determine the speed of the slide and this you can change right here in this cogwheel where you can change the slide speed A and the slide speed B. And basically determining on the velocity that you play, you can trigger either the A speed or the B speed. So if I play with a low velocity, I get a longer slide in this case. And with a higher velocity, I get a quicker slide. Now the next really important control is the ghost notes and the ghost notes can give you a lot of realism when you're playing electric bass parts on a keyboard. Let me show you. If I disable it, I don't get any ghost notes. If I enable it, when I play really low velocity, I get these nice ghost notes. Now I can set the velocity where the ghost notes will occur and I can say let's go a little bit higher, let's go 80 and now we'll get ghost notes when I play any velocity below 80. So ghost notes are incredibly important when you're trying to create realistic bass parts because bass players they use ghost notes as a form of expression. So a really, really good option to have. And now, of course, I'm going to show you a little bit of the processing options. When you launch the initial preset, it's all the way to DI. So this is a DI bass sound. And then we have this dial that allows us to blend between the DI signal and the amp and effects signal. So this gives you a lot of versatility. You have everything in one place. Now the other cool thing is I can move those effects. As you can see right here, I can swap the effects. I can move them across. For example, I might want the amp to be before the DI driver. So let's try that. which of course gives me a different sound. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to play a few sounds for you so that you can hear what kind of tones you can get out of this library. Of course, there are tons of combinations, so I'm going to try and cover just a few of them. So let's start with a clean P bass sound. And I want to show you, first of all, how expressive this is without even touching the controls. Now the first thing that I like in this library is that I get this buzz sound from the strings on these notes. And this adds to the realism of the instrument. And I'm going to show you how you can control this. If I go to the interface and I go to this cogwheel right here, I can select the fret buzz level and the frequency. So depending on what you're trying to do, you might want to adjust this. And of course, if you don't want the fret buzz, you can still disable it completely. In my case, I really like it. I will not turn it off personally unless I had to do something that's super clinical and I wanted a very, very clean sound. But the second thing I want to talk about is how fast you can play on this library. So as you can see, I can immediately start playing and without touching any key switches, nothing, I can immediately play super fast and with incredible amount of expression. Now, of course, with the key switches, we have quite a few controls. You can change the player styles. We can change the string that every note is going to be played. But in the top octaves, we also have the slides. So for example, I can have various slides. And of course, depending on the velocity that you use, you trigger a different slide every time, even on the same key. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to get some drums, courtesy of Groove Agent and the Simon Phillips Drum Library, and I'm going to play with the P bass. So let's do this.
Now I'm going to play a preset for you called Apocalypse, and I think this works great for metal. It's an all pickups bass sound, and it's a pick bass sound. It sounds like this. So with drums. Now I'm going to play the clean J bass for you. So as you can tell, on styles like this, the ghost notes are going to give you a nice flavor and a nice realism. Let's move on to the next one. The next sound I'm going to play for you is the clean MM bass. And in this case, I'm going to add a little bit of the amp sound. So this is the clean one. So to get a little bit of bottom man, I'm going to add a little bit of the amp sound. To get a little bit of oomph. So let's play it. Now I'm going to play a preset for you called Bag of Nerves, and this is an old pickup space sound. Next, we have the clean Rick bass preset. Let's try it. Next, I'm going to play a preset called Hang On, and this is a P bass sound with a mute articulation, and it sounds gorgeous. Check it out. So let's play something groovy. The next sound is called Smooth Walk, and I think it sounds great for jazz walking bass lines.
So there you go guys, this is our brand new library, Electric Bass. Hope you found this video useful and entertaining and I hope it gave you a good idea of how many amazing bass sounds you can get out of this library. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.